Good morning everyone, my name is Michelle, I hope you're doing well, welcome to another video. It is Friday morning the 5th of April and this is another tear-jerking video for you today. I'm going to be talking about the Sebastian Rogers case and an interview that Seth Rogers, Sebastian's biological father, did with Court TV. I haven't seen this on YouTube, I can't find it on YouTube but it's on their website. I did put it on my community tab. I don't know how many people saw it. I don't know how many creators picked up on it, but he extended what he said to Justin on TikTok about Sebastian being molested and other things as well. So trigger warning, this is a heavy one. Let's go. Before we get into this content, let me just say that I did say yesterday in my video that I was going to do a live stream yesterday about the search, but there wasn't really anything to report. That They were out there searching, but there wasn't a lot of footage that was released or anything, so I just didn't. There's that. So it's a couple of nights ago now that Seth Rogers, who is just so done, he's done playing nice. He just wants to know where Sebastian is. And he believes that Katie Proudfoot, Sebastian's mother, is responsible. He said exactly that on Court TV. Exactly that. But in case you haven't seen Justin on TikTok's live stream with Seth Rogers or the video that I made yesterday, then let me play you the clip again. The one that has... Um, shocked everyone before chris and katie came back here there was another cps incident in california at her house katie let katie and chris let a a child into their house that was five years older than my son my son was seven or eight at the time and this kid was 13 and she has a habit of not checking on her kid i would never let some kid that's five years older than my son play with my my son anyways it's like why do you want to play with my son there's a five-year difference that's a pretty big difference you're 13 and my son you're, you're a teenager my son is not a teenager he, he's still playing with hot wheels and legos and you know he's building things he's playing video games and you're a teenager you go out and you have your own you know age appropriate group that you play with and they were letting this kid play with my son and they weren't checking on him and then this kid took my son's innocence and he molested him. So you take your time. And there was nothing I could do in California because the kid was 13. But they let that happen. And they didn't bother to try to even get my son help until last year. Here, my son is just turned 15 in December. That means he's been dealing with an emotional, stressful, traumatic incident for the last seven years. And I, I've been trying to help him. I've been trying to get him help. <sighs> Going to talk to his doctor and telling them what happened. And for the doctor to tell me, she was like, I knew none of this stuff. And I'm like, really? Because he's supposed to be seeing a therapist for this. And she's like, well, the, he's not seeing the right type of therapist for this type of trauma. I care about my son. And I just, actions speak so much louder than words. And there's just no justification for the actions that I've seen from them. They're not parents. They're not parents at all. In my comments after yesterday's video, I saw quite a few people blaming Seth, saying that it's just as much Seth's fault that Sebastian didn't get the help he needed as it is Katie and Chris's, because they share custody. So I do get, I understand where people are coming from, but I think you're not understanding the full context. Seth was under the impression that Sebastian was getting therapy, but it was a doctor that told him that he wasn't getting the right kind of therapy, he wasn't getting trauma therapy, is the thing that he needed. And as I said in yesterday's video, 
you know, in my years, many years, over 20 years as a psychologist, I was considered an expert on these things. Males who've been assaulted, molested in that way was one of my specialist subjects. And in my own research paper that was published in back in 2005 now, when not many people were talking about essay of males, and we have to use the term essay, guys, for those who are wondering, because of YouTube and it picks up on. It's ridiculous, I know. But Males Who've Been Essayed, this paper that I published in 2005, it was 40 males who'd been essayed and almost half of them had attempted to take their own life. And the biggest predictor in this study of not attempting to take one's own life was having adequate psychological support. That can be professional support, trauma therapy, an appropriate professional way of dealing with that trauma. But it also involves social support, social support from family, from friends, not being blamed for what happened, being believed, that kind of thing. Where all of that combined is psychological support. On Court TV, Seth expanded on this horrible, horrible story. And I think I think her name is Julie Grant, the one who does opening statements. Like Vinnie Politan does the closing arguments show. But I think it's Julie Grant, her name, who does opening statements. And um, I can't find this on YouTube. But I think Julie Grant, if that really is her name, was shocked. She was absolutely shocked when this came out of Seth's mouth. So he talks about the incident that was on Justin's on TikTok. And he, he said more. Are you leaning towards a, a potential kidnapping? Anything is speculation at this point in time. Because there is no, as they have said, evidence that leads towards foul play. But there's things that just don't add up. His mother was the last one to see him. She's responsible for this. Either through negligence at the bare minimum. Has she been a good mother to Sebastian? Not in my opinion. What this is the third time that you've been an issue. You know, my son's come up missing now under her watch. Time before that, her and Chris let my son get molested and raped in, in their apartment. And the time before that, I did a well care check because she let a known sex offender who yes did their nine years in prison but she left my son around that person you don't do that if you're a parent you don't do that you're supposed to protect your kid so there's somebody in katie's life when she was living in california who had been in prison for nine years done done their time obviously or a known SO who was around Sebastian. Does that mean anything happened to Sebastian? No. But from a basic safety point of view, that's a difficult one, isn't it? Hopefully Sebastian was never left alone with that person. But Julie went back to that topic and I think she handled it really well. I think she did. I don't think she expected that to be said. Ex-wife allowed Sebastian to be in a situation where he was molested and raped? In California. And Chris in her apartment. They let a child who was five years older than my son play with my son and didn't bother to check on him there neither. And he lost his innocence because of it. Seth, I'm so sorry to hear this. I'm so sorry to hear this. 
no child should be subjected to any kind of abuse whatsoever. Uh, sexual abuse can be especially traumatic for a young child. Is this something that Sebastian has struggled with since then? Yeah, I finally was able to actually get all, get start getting him therapy for it last year. The fact is, is that they weren't doing the correct, they weren't doing the correct thing clear in California. And it's just, <sighs> Last year, finally getting him help because he's a victim. And now I'm finding out not only was, you know, he was a victim of that, he's a victim of not getting the help he needs. And, you know, I've listened to some of their podcasts where they make fun of him, you know, make fun of his dancing. Chris obviously has this thing about corporal discipline with him. And, it's just it's not good he's not pulling any punches he is done he's done with playing nice it's understandable why grandma robin says mother sebastian's grandmother has been so hateful towards chris proudfoot because of something that Chris Proudfoot said to her, talking about adequate psychological support, definitely not getting it with Chris Proudfoot. That's why Chris doesn't want my son around his daughter, because he's scared that my son is going to do the same thing that was done to him under his watch. And Chris Proudfoot, if you're listening to this, you can't hold that over my head. I told you. You're going to piss me the fuck off, and I don't give a fuck who knows. It's your fault. It's your and your wife's fault. You guys don't deserve to be around kids. And it's this, this very thing that Chris Profoot said to Robin Rogers. You know, well, you're going to a parent's worst nightmare, but that's like the second worst nightmare. My son around his daughter. Because Chris has turned around into my mother, told my mom, your grandson's a pedophile. No, he's not. He's a victim that hasn't got the help that he deserves and that he needs so that he can get over the traumatic incident that has happened to him. How can you call a child a pedo? How can you call a child a pedo who was molested when he was eight at eight years old? Absolutely no way that you'll understand what has what has happened. You're going to normalise it as a way to deal with your trauma. Look, males who've been essayed, the majority of them don't actually go on to become perpetrators, but some do. And one of the reasons is because of being too young to understand what's happening to you and you normalise it. Now, Sebastian has a chromosomal deletion syndrome and autism, which make it more difficult than the average person to understand social situations. So Sebastian is in an even more precarious position, trying to make sense of this on his own for years. And Seth did eventually get him the support. But Seth, let, let's understand this situation better by understanding Seth's position in this. He explained this to Julie Grant. Let's understand this. That Seth, although he had shared custody, was only seeing Sebastian every other weekend and then some holidays. So he had to trust that Katie was getting Sebastian the appropriate therapy. Because she spends the majority of time with him. And who would have to take him to these therapy sessions? Katie. Katie would. So I can understand it why Seth is blaming her. It was on her watch. Was Sebastian the one who told you about the sexual abuse that had happened? His mother did. And my son did. This happened in California. So... 
Sheriff's Department, CPS was involved. Sheriff's Department was involved there. They wouldn't give me the, the kid's name, his last name. But I, at least I was, the only thing I was able to do there was put the, the, sheriff, the detective over that case in contact with the school psychologist so that at least they could protect the other children from this child. Right. So no juvenile proceedings would, commenced or anything like that, Seth, with this child? He wasn't brought to juvenile California. court? Mm -hmm. No. In California, kids 13, you know, they're like, he's too young to prosecute. And they wouldn't do anything about the parents either. And now we have this horrible situation where Sebastian has disappeared. And it's understandable that Seth, is blaming Katie and Chris because they haven't been very good parental figures. That's what Seth believes, not what I believe, it's what Seth believes. And we've got to give Seth the grace to be angry. It's understandable, he's played so nice, he's been very gracious towards them for five weeks and now he's done. He's done. And quite frankly, I do not blame him. Where is Sebastian Rogers? Where is he? Good girl. <laughs> <laughs>